just an ass. And in time, this too shall pass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Jerry Petito taught the class. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Loves the answer, the greener grass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. One day at a time, free at last. When you don't know just what to do. Just what to do, just what to do. If what you're feeling is really true. It's really true, is it really true? Just keep your ideas safe and sound. Safe and Exactly how change is found. Change is found. Change is found. I'm not an addict. I'm just an ass. And in time, this too shall pass. I'm not an addict. I'm just an ass. Jerry Petito taught the class. I'm not an addict. I'm just an ass. Loves the answer, the greener grass. I'm not an addict. I'm just an ass. One day at a time, free at last. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jerry Petito Show on Hamilton Radio. Guys, this is so cool. So everyone who knows me knows I am the author of I'm Not an Addict, I'm Just an Ass. I'd rather be a smartass than a dumbass because, guys, 30 years ago, I was a dumbass. But today, through the grace of God, and yes, the word ass is in the Bible. It means donkey. I am now a smartass. How about that? <laughs> so... <laughs> I just want everyone out there to know, I know this has been a really tough year and a half or so for a lot of people and more for some. Everyone out there should know that there's help and someone is just a phone call away. So I want you to know that I'm a recovery coach, I'm a nutritional health coach. All my services to you are free. No one should go through this alone. If you or anyone in your family or a loved one is struggling, please reach out to me. If you want to purchase the book for someone, you can go to Archway Publishing. Um, that's a derivative of now. Simon & Schuster. Simon & Schuster sold, but it's still under Simon & Schuster. So it's Archway Publishing. So, And you can pick up a copy of the book. This book is to save a life. Okay? So again, all my services to you are free. Please reach out if needed. Having said that, I've got a really, really cool <coughs> show for you guys. Okay, Mike Dupree, baby, everybody, right here. Hi, everybody. It's great to see everybody. From Halloween Kills. Halloween Kills. I mean, we got this dummy here, but we got the two, we got the two star dummies there, oh, you're right? You're too kind. Oh, yeah, yeah. there's got uh, Horace on my right, and then we have Red, who is a uh, new addition to the collection. How cool is that? <laughs> and, yeah, Ruben, we do hear ourselves, too. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, that's Ruben, everybody, okay? Um, so I love, like, people who do impersonations, impressions, and ventriloquists. I'm, like, addicted to that craziness, okay? <laughs> and let's give a shout-out to our connection first and foremost, John Terlizzi, because great guy. he's a great guy. And um, I want to thank him really for this, and I want to thank you for coming live in studio. You had no a long problem. drive, man. You had a long drive. John did me a favor. Uh, that's <laughs> how is, I feel. This has been a great connection. This I'll tell is you so what. cool. Um, <laughs> and your two boys, man, they're so cool. Nothing but trouble, this guy on the oh, right. Oh, he is trouble. I he will. started trouble. <laughs> Listen, will. guys, we did a little live here earlier. He started trouble, okay? <laughs> Red cannot hang out with him after the show, okay? No. There's a, too big of an age difference for one thing, but... Uh, okay. <laughs> Tell everyone first a little bit about your background. Well, my background, Looking the reason I got into uh, puppetry in the first place was I was born with a rare form of autism, but back then they weren't sure exactly what it was. They didn't call it autism. And it was in the uh, spectrum of autism, which was Asperger's. And didn't talk much as a child, uh, but that soon changed thanks to picking up my very first ventriloquist dummy which uh, that's a term that everybody uses. A lot of people are funny about, oh, it's a figure. That's a dummy. Who cares? <laughs> you can't be temperamental about that. And uh, I use that as therapy. My mom bought it for me when I was, I believe, five years old, picked it up, and uh, used it all the time. And it helped me overcome a lot of the obstacles of life using that ventriloquist dummy. I uh, broke it uh, like a year after and... Uh, my mom said, I'm not going to buy you another one unless you learn how to do it the right way. So I said, oh, I, I want one. So I taught myself from the book that came with it and the, the little record, How to Be a Ventriloquist. And from that time, I impressed her so much, she went out and she bought me a, another. And it was a, a Jerry Mahoney figure, which Paul Winchell was the guy on TV at the time. 
and every kid would rush home and watch uh, Winchell Mahoney time. And uh, he was on the Brady Bunch. He was the voice of Tigger. He was all over the place in 70s television. He was on the Brady Bunch. He was at Laugh-In and numerous other shows, hundreds of them. But his voice as Tigger uh, was also, uh, he used it as uh, Knucklehead Smith. And I uh, was like, the funny thing about Tigger, you know, <laughs> that was the, the voice he used for Knucklehead Smith. And I, I picked up on that when I was a little kid, said, that's, that's the same guy that, that's the same voice that was uh, on Knucklehead Smith. But he was a big inspiration, as was uh, Edgar Bergen with Charlie McCarthy, of course. And from that point in time, I was ruined. And uh, <laughs> I love this. But uh, yeah, through the years, I went all through school irritating my teachers with them and uh, also friends. And later at work, uh, I joined the Coast Guard, did a tour with the Coast Guard, uh, worked in radio for years and years, and uh, then <clears throat> worked for the electric company, which I retired recently, and uh, worked for Tropicana on stage as a ventriloquist announcer for about nine years in Atlantic City. Okay, so Ruben, I need a favor from you. I need you to also tag me in it because I can't find the post, but if you tag me, I'll be able to. Okay? It says you shared it. It's not letting me see it for some weird reason. Guys, I'm just trying to find this because I really want to share this, like ASAP. Um, so this is what I want to say to you. So autism. Mm -hmm. And it's funny that how much I've learned over the years about it. Um musicians a lot of them yeah also have it and music helps save their life yeah i can understand why yeah i uh <clears throat> music i can tell you just about every single note in any orchestral uh, movement in the symphonies uh, i couldn't write music to save my life uh, i couldn't read music but i know the keys and i could mimic it on a piano if i had to it's it's odd how that works and there's all different spectrums in autism and it, it's just funny how the brain locks into a specific thing <clears throat> okay we've got it shared now i'm so excited okay <laughs> so tell me something like when you were younger can can we talk about your age sure okay tell everyone how old you are i'm 57. okay so i mean i'm 60 so we're kind of close yeah. So back then, we didn't know about all this. They no. didn't know about all this. They had no clue. They had no clue about any of it. But yet, for some reason, a lot of people from back then became actors and singers and artists. Yeah. So they knew one thing at least that they were in the arts, that their mind mm -hmm. was so right-brained. Like, I don't consider myself left-brained at all, okay? I'm not into the math and all that nonsense. I'm an artist and uh, a writer and all that. But if you combine that and autism, you could get some brilliant, brilliant creations out of it. Oh, and absolutely. And it happened. I have to agree with that. Yes. Like myself, I can pick up a block of wood and a knife and carve anything you want. Uh, but ask me to spell chrysanthemum, forget it. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a great speller, but I'm terrible at math. I don't know. I wasn't supposed to be, but I, I was. But the funny thing is, you know, all right, so the past year and a half, and I don't want to bring up all that, has been rough on so many people, and a lot of people that have been on lockdown and in their homes and elderly people and all that. You guys, musicians, you've helped save their lives. So I want to thank you for that because that you're honor. also an essential <coughs> person, you know, with what's been going on. So thank you for everything that you do. Yeah, I, at that time, I was actually working for Atlantic City Electric uh, in the line gang. And we were putting up lines, keeping people's power on. And I wasn't doing that by myself. I, everybody else uh, had a hand in it as well. And they all did a great job. But we also did the uh, entertainment thing. And uh, prior to COVID, it's when I filmed the movie Halloween Kills. It was actually done in 2019. That's how far back it was that we filmed. So now I want you to look at the camera and tell the audience <laughs> about the movie. Everything, good, bad, and different. Let's <laughs> good, hear it all. You want to know how I got the part? Want, and we want to know everything. It was a, a fluke. In fact, 
this little guy over here is carved by Conrad Hartz, who is a, a good friend of mine who's a ventriloquist carver from South Carolina. And I got a call from him one day and he said, they're looking for a ventriloquist for this movie called Mob Rules. And didn't realize it at the time, every single uh, movie that's out uses a production title. So I was thinking, yeah, Mob Rules, that's that movie they did back in the 80s in England. And uh, it was a horrible movie. I don't know why they're remaking it, but okay. And he said, submit a video to this uh this lady and I'll give you her number. So I got the number, gave her a call. She said, yep, submit a video of you doing your act and uh, we may or may not get back to you. So uh, I submitted it, not thinking I'd hear anything back. Next thing you know, I got a call the next day. Would you be able to do a little more? And um, we're also gonna ask you just to sing, uh, you know, I don't care what song it is, just a little bit. And I'm not known as a singer, but uh, I said, sure. Submitted it and uh, <clears throat> Again, I didn't think I'd hear anything. They called me right back and said, um, we have about 150 uh, ventriloquists that we have set up uh, that are auditioning for this, but uh, we have you narrowed down to about the top 10. Would you mind doing a Zoom call with the uh, writer, the director, the producer? And I said, yeah, sure, no problem. And I'm still thinking it's, you know, mob rules, some <clears throat> student film or something of that nature. So when the Zoom call came on, I could see the names pop up one by one. I saw David Gordon Green, Jason Blum, uh, Mal Malik Akkad, and um, when I saw that, I knew this was bigger than I actually thought. It was in the Halloween 2018 that I remember seeing those names that I thought, my goodness, I have reason to be nervous. So I was real nervous, and uh, <clears throat> what they did was they asked me if I could uh, sing uh, this little song. I have a sad story to tell you. It may hurt your feelings a bit. <laughs> Last night when I walked into my bathroom, I step in a big pile of shit, 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 shit. You're not allowed to say that. <laughs> He's, the bad. He's he, the bad one. He's the bad. That's one. the one you got to watch out for. I told you, no cursing, <laughs> young man. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, when I did that, I ad libbed that uh, because they wanted to hear the song "Shaving Cream," and they bursted out laughing. I thought. Wow, that's pretty good. And then they said, uh, can you do a little risky type of act? Uh, I said, sure. So I came up with the, you know, yeah. the stuff. Uh, <clears throat> well, it's... Uh, let's do some. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if uh, you can see Horace uh, too much, uh, but... There you go. Uh, so... Uh, so, Horace, how's your sex life? I held my own. <laughs> stop, you can't say that. You're going to get us ticked off. I like to keep in touch with myself. Oh, stop it. What did I tell you about that? Huh, and it doesn't ha help you have in your hand and like, stop it. Huh, I have hemorrhoids. Stop. You always were made out of nothing. That. Uh, they don't want to hear that kind of stuff. And I said, no, I don't, it may be. And I thought, well, that was it. And next thing I know, I got a call the next week. And they said, can you be down in North Carolina, Wilmington, North Carolina, between the 16th and the 20th? And I said, uh, absolutely. I don't care if it was catch a can Alaska, I was going to be there. That's so cool. <laughs> and for a few days after that, I was on such a natural high. And I mean to tell you that I was so excited that I actually got something like that. And they didn't tell me what movie it was still. And I thought, well, they did Halloween 2018, but I'm not sure if that's what it's going to be is a Halloween. But uh, no matter what it is with David Gordon Green and Jason Blum from Blumhouse, 
I, I don't I don't care what it is. It. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then next thing I know, they uh, they sent me a, uh, a an e sign to sign over the internet, and then they said that we're going to be sending a script. And when I saw that script, and it had my name and watermark across it. And I saw the title. I was like, oh, my God, this is uh, exactly what I thought it was. It was Halloween Kills. Hold that note. We have a surprise caller for you. Okay. Okay. Hello? Hey, um, I'd like to know if uh, Mike Dupree will let me have a date with Horace. <laughs> 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 you may want to reconsider I mean, that. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I've met him, and he's he's pretty much my type, Mike. <laughs> Introduce your your surprise caller. Uh, hey, Mike. This is Barbara Dole. Oh, hey, Barbara! My gosh, she is fresh from the set of Halloween Kills. What a great lady. Oh, my goodness. It is so great to hear your voice again, Barbara. She was on the set while I was there at the Rusty Nail doing our uh, our filming. <laughs> it is well, so great. I just to have to say that you were the highlight of everybody on the set. Everybody <laughs> loved you. You made everybody laugh, and it was a pleasure working with you It was and, and your dummy. <laughs> <laughs> She's such a great lady. Oh In fact, we just reconnected because uh, it wasn't until... I actually saw the credits in Halloween Kills that I saw your last name because I knew it was uh, Barbara, and I'm thinking, I never knew your last name. So oh, that's uh, funny. Then when I saw it, that's when I found you on Facebook, and I said, I got to Facebook her. <laughs> and uh, it was such well, a great... I, wa I, watched, I watched the movie last night and um, for the first time, and you were fabulous, <laughs> and um, I hope this enlightens everybody to the world of ventriloquism because uh, you just did a fabulous job. And I have to say, the off-color uh, jokes that you told on set were hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we're, we're still doing them, and I'm surprised that I haven't gotten Jerry kicked off the air yet. Listen, but, uh, he's doing great. We, had, we did the live, Barbara, just for some fun to let everybody know, tune in at four. And I'm smacking him around. I'm like, not on, on the air, though. <laughs> Oh, Barbara, know, it's so heard, great heard hearing you. Is holding his own. <laughs> so, Barbara, Barbara, since we have you, and you were kind of behind the scenes helping these guys, tell everyone your role, please. Okay, what I do is called craft service, and what that basically means is I keep the crew and the cast members alive in between lunch and dinner. <laughs> I love it. It's not, a, it's not a catering job, but it's more like, providing them with nutritional snacks and drinks. And if it's super hot, we have water stations and Gatorade stations set up all over the place just just to keep everybody going so they, before they can sit down for a meal. And was it hard keeping this guy alive or his dummies? <laughs> um, no, they were actually, um, it seemed like his dummy uh, didn't drink much at all. I think he was <laughs> sucking down most of everything. <laughs> Um, but no, he was, he was a pleasure and, um, always smiling, always happy. And everybody was talked about him all the time. So it was such a nice, nice experience to work with him. Yeah, we had a great group of people and you were absolutely my favorite down there, especially, uh, not because of the food aspect, but you're always so nice and uh, you are everybody's go-to person. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> you're welcome. It well, has been to you. It so great joy. to hear from you. And what a surprise and a shock, and it brought a tear to my eye to hear from you. Aw, that's so, so sweet. Well, don't tear up too much because you might warp horse. <laughs> He's already warped. So I have a question for you, Barbara. You okay. would really date Horace? Because I kind of like Red over there. <laughs> Red's so sweet and nice. Horace has been like, you know, kind of well, like, you know. Well, you know, it's, I think it's the bow tie that gets him. <laughs> <laughs> he just is a little, um, a little bit more refined, if you will. So before we let you go, I, first of all, I want to say <laughs> thank you for doing this, and I want to say thank you for connecting with me. Um, do you want to share a little bit about, like, your thoughts on Halloween Kills? Well, um, honestly, I watched it. It was um, when you're working behind the scenes, you right. really have no idea how the movie's going to turn out. Right. And literally, um, in a lot of 
the scenes in the movie, like when Jamie Lee was running down the hallway, I was standing right there out of sight with a tray of sandwiches ready to pass them out to everybody as soon as um, she finished her little scene there. Uh, I thought it was very gory. Um, <laughs> there was intense amounts of blood in this one. Yes. And um, it's just, it's so different to work on a movie like that and see how it's made as opposed to just watching it and thinking, oh, my God, this is so horrible, so horrible. But it's, it's kind of funny when you see it. And um, I was pretty much known as the set chicken, so <laughs> everybody would jump out and do crazy things to me while I was working. And it was just um, pretty, pretty fun. <laughs> But I thought it was well done, and um, David Gordon Green, I've worked with him on the last two Halloween movies, and he's a pleasure, and oh, great I'm hoping that um, I'll be able to work on the final one starting in January called Halloween Ends. Keep, oh. keep my fingers crossed. That will crossed. be the one that ends? <laughs> well. <But> supposedly. <laughs> yeah. Supposedly, yeah, yeah. Jamie Lee at 105. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Chasing Michael Myers. <laughs> so I wanted to share something with you, Barbara, something you'll laugh about. So I have a very good friend. Her name is Kathy Kasu, and she was a set nurse. She's, she's retired. She's now with K&D Unique Entertainment. She still does the shows and all that, but she worked on set with, I mean, everyone, you know, from back in the day, Robert and you, I mean, everyone. And I always wow. made fun of her and said, did you give anyone fake mouth to mouth? <laughs> okay, because listen, if I were her, I would have told them, you look faint, lay down, you know? <laughs> it's funny. So. Uh, there, we, we still have those set medics um, running around keeping people safe and happy. And, yep. But that, I bet she has some stories she could tell. Yes, she <laughs> does. So. And getting back to Jamie Lee, wasn't she such a nice down to earth person? I, I absolutely adore her. She, she is, is so fun. And one day I was changing, just putting a fresh liner in the trash can at the crafty table. And somebody came up behind me and smacked me on the butt. <laughs> and I thought, oh, my God, who is doing this? And I turned around to give him a piece of my mind. And it was Jamie Lee. And she was standing there laughing her, her butt off over it. <laughs> she is such a, a very nice. All right, so listen, I got something to say to both of you people, okay, Barbara and Mike. Get me Jamie Lee, baby. <laughs> Come on, work your magic. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't work be your great? magic. I'll have you all here in person. Come on. I don't think I have that much pull. No. But I think, I think right. Barbara does. You know why? Because she kept her alive. Yeah. <laughs> and she smacked her butt. You know so listen. Her, her favorite thing to eat was a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on white bread with a lactose-free milk. Oh, my gosh. That's so funny. All right, girlfriend. You're yeah, my new best M &M. friend. Barbara, my well, new best you. friend. My, it's been a pleasure to talk to you again, and let's keep in touch. Oh, we sure thank should, you, Barbara. Sweetheart. It's been such a surprise to hear from you, and what a thrill. And uh, it was great working with you, and uh, I do. I hope I uh, get to see you again really soon, hopefully in January. Likewise. <laughs> Mike, that's that why I was that saying to Ruben, you got to start this on time, and you know why, because I had yeah. her calling in at a certain time. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. I love you, girl, and I, I haven't even you. met you. Just everything Thank I heard you. about you. Thank you. Take sweetheart. care, Barbara. All right. Bye-bye. How's that? Oh, what a shot. That was pretty cool, oh, right? You did goodness. tear up. I can't yeah, believe I did. it. That... How cool is that? Yeah, she was such a super person. In fact, everybody in my scene, I... <laughs> I uh, fell in love with Carmela McNeil, Michael Smallwood, <clears throat> Robert Longstreet, uh, Anthony Michael Hall. He treated me like I was his brother, you know. <laughs> oh, cool. <clears throat> he didn't like the, the dummies, but... Uh, well, we don't like him he now. He said, they, they creep me out. Get that away from oh, me. Oh, yeah, he's <laughs> at Halloween Kills, but they creep him out. That's hysterical. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so... Okay, before we were so rudely interrupted by oh, your surprise caller. What, what a great. Amazing. She's amazing, right? <laughs> oh, she, she really was. She I mean, was a super person. She was so nice to me. She was like, yes, I'll do. I was like, this is great. That was nice of you. <laughs> so. What a shock. So now, continue talking about. So now you get the part. You're going to be in Halloween Kills. Yep. And uh, they flew me down and uh, put me up at a beautiful hotel, limousine service to and from. And uh, <clears throat> I had a. Uh, a brand new Dodge Ram pickup truck at my disposal that I could come and go as I pleased. And uh, I got to hang out with the Levesque triplets. That's the triplets that are on stage uh, before my scene. 
And uh, they were such That's great. That's child girls. abuse, man. They're in a scary movie. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. No, well, they're, they're not young. They were actually in their 20s. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, they're grown women. That's better. Uh, well, that's why they're in the bar. <laughs> yeah. It'd be strange if they were young and in a bar at night. But uh, the funny part was when we filmed, it was actually uh, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning but they had drapes over every window and then a big black canopy over the front. So it looked like it was night. So all our shots that looked at, like they were at night were actually in, in the daytime. Oh, wow. And uh, then uh, <clears throat> Barbara, her setup was right out, right outside the, uh, the door. Uh, they filmed both in uh, the, uh, the Rusty Nail, which is in Wilmington and also in Screen Gems. That's where all the shots with the blood and the guts and the gore uh, <clears throat> Michael Myers house was inside yeah. a studio. It wasn't a real house. So yeah. I, I don't mean to. Oh yeah, sure. Anybody, I, think, but, I think they know, <laughs> but yeah, anyhow, I got the script and uh, I'm thumbing through it and I'm going over my parts, which is, you know, real basic. And, uh, I thought, you know, after I filmed that, I wonder how much of this is going to hit the cutting room floor or whatever, but, I was so surprised how much I actually made it. And if you look in the shots, if you look over to the right hand side, when the, the triplets are on stage, you'll see me and mostly Harsh. You'll see him sitting off to the side, just watching the triplets. Uh, but that's where they had us sit uh, before we went on stage. But uh, it was really a, a great experience. And you know how they say there's a lot of egos in entertainment. I did not personally see any of it. And, oh, that's uh, so nice to hear. Every... They were probably all too scared to show it. <laughs> well, here's the thing. With horror movies, it's not tense on the scene like you think that oh, oh. everybody it is jovial. Everybody is joking around and having a great time. And then when they call. But wait, I have a question about that. Because okay. I wouldn't have thought that. Right. But here's my question. Do you think it's done unintentionally intentional because people are maybe afraid and know if they bring out humor, it'll help them too. I'm, I'm not certain why okay. that is. I think it's David Gordon Green is such an outstanding director. I don't think he gets the full credit that he deserves. Okay. Although everything he touches turns to gold. He puts everybody at ease and he gets the most out of every single artist. Okay. On film. So and, that's cool. And I've never seen anybody, I've been on hundreds of sets and I've never seen anybody operate like he does. And he, he gets stuff out of people that they, you normally wouldn't get. So that's good. So he made them very comfortable. He did. So absolutely. it was a fun, see, I wouldn't <laughs> think that. I would think it's like very scary and like, you know, all right, cool. <laughs> Not at all. Everybody was joking around, having a good time. And then when he called action, then everybody snapped to it. And So know. I have a question for you. Can I call action and you do like maybe a scene with your guy? Yeah, my scene basically was uh, singing the... Okay. The shaving cream song. Okay. And then I did my act, which you've seen bits okay, of. Okay. Okay. Uh, but a lot of it is too inappropriate for oh, any of the young. And that was on the sh on the movie. Uh, it actually that hit the cutting room floor. A lot of it for time's sake because they did have to add a few more kills. Oh, okay. In the movie itself. Kills. That had kills. That's what you said. You mean like real kills? Well, yeah. The uh, or. I get it. Action yeah, kills. I know what you mean. <laughs> uh, there was a guy on stage with me that uh, he actually hit the, the cutting room floor totally. He didn't even make it in the picture, which I was sorry to see because he was such a nice guy. Uh, <clears throat> Did he know that was going to happen to him? No. What does that mean? Explain that. It's uh, you go and you do your part in the film and uh, you don't know what the editor is going to be doing. Or, oh. And they have to cut out certain things for time's sake. Oh. Or, and like the uh, triplets, they were on before me. They had a long part and theirs were cut down. Uh, mine, I did the shaving cream song, the whole song and part of my act. And that got cut down. And I'm happy that I made what I did. I'm, I'm certainly thankful for that. And uh, very cool. The, uh, <clears throat> the triplets, they, like I said, they've, they got cut down and they did a great job and they were real professional. So show me how to use my boy. We're going to do this, guys.
Okay. All right. And the, the whole... Hi. The whole reason I brought him is because Conrad Hartz carved him. And Conrad, who is a, a very well-known ventriloquist figure carver out of South Carolina, he's been in the business Hi. many years. He's actually restored uh, Howdy Doody and worked with Buffalo Bob Smith. And he was the one that called me and gave me the heads up on the uh, Halloween Kills movie. So to pay homage to Conrad, who is a great friend, I, uh, I brought this little guy. Now, how do I get it, him to, to move his mouth? Okay. Uh, being you're using your left hand, you'll see a little thumb, uh, oh. thumb trigger. <gasps> All right. So let's see if I can do this. Okay, guys? All right. Hello there. Is this good? I'm doing good, right? <laughs> you got to get close hey, to the microphone. Baby. <laughs> hey, baby. How you doing? How you doing? The Jerry Petito Show on Hamilton Radio. Yes, I'm not an addict. I'm just an ass. <gasps> I'd rather be a smart ass than a dumb ass. <laughs> Woo! That's the first time I saw an Irish boy with an Italian <laughs> accent. Oh, what are you doing here, Vinny? He's so cute. He's so cute. He's he my is well, buddy. well made and... He's carved out of a solid block of uh, basswood. Now talk about that. Tell, talk about who made your dummies and what they're made of. Okay. Talk about that. He is uh, made out of basswood, as I said, and a lot of time gets put into carving, sanding, priming, and painting. And then the mechanics, the mechanics involved are, are tedious, and uh, that, that's a big part of it as well. Now, okay. excuse us. We have another surprise caller for you. Oh my goodness! <laughs> All right, so I, I couldn't get Jamie Lee, but <laughs> are you going to make me tear up on this one? No, too? this is going to be a funny one. Oh, okay. Hello, caller. Mm, hello, this is John Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> hey oh my is goodness! This the city board. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing? How you doing, baby? <laughs> okay, say hello to Mike and uh, Jerry. <laughs> you get two dummies. I uh -huh. don't know their names. <laughs> so tell everyone how you know uh, John first. Well, I met John in Atlantic City Radio years and years ago. And uh, I think it was, a, was it W-O-N-D? John, is that where I met you at? Um, uh, no, no, just John Talizzi. I met you on Facebook. Oh, 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 okay. I thought, <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought it was John Peasy. Sorry about that. <laughs> so this is John Talizzi. Yeah, yeah, John, I met on uh, Facebook. Uh, it's been... Two years now, wait, right, Mike? What's that? Yeah. We've been on Facebook for years. Yeah, it's been probably... Yeah, I'm on Newswatch, uh, Tucker. Yep. Yeah. So has he stalked you for this interview? Did he, like, stalk you and <laughs> no, say, John, call Jerry, call Jerry? Yeah, no, he, uh, he gave me the heads up, which uh, I greatly appreciated. And, uh, yeah, John always gives me a heads up on stuff, but uh, this was the first time that uh, it was for something like this, and I, I greatly appreciate that, John. Yes, uh, and then you told me you were in the movie, uh, Hollywood, Hollywood Kills, which I watched, was... Pretty scary. Uh, Jerry <laughs> won't watch it though. No. <laughs> yeah. I even said the part of it. She don't want to watch it. Nope. She sent me part of it. In, uh, I turned it you on. Don't get the... Yeah. Go ahead. I turned it on for a minute. I just, you know, I had to, but that's it. John, wait. Red wants to say hi to you. Hold on. <laughs> hi, John. Hi, John. Hi, Red buddy. said hi. <laughs> <laughs> You had a better part than Mike in the movie. <laughs> I'm the famous one here. Stop it. Yeah, you know, you're famous now on, on the movie now. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I want to ask Mike a question. Did he get any blood on him through all this action? Uh, this movie? Well, uh, a buddy of mine that went to the premiere with me, he's the one that said, uh, it's funny. You and the dummy and the triplets are the only ones in the whole town that didn't get killed. <laughs> yeah, you're lucky. Was that true? Yeah, we didn't get killed. 
and there were everyone else did. Uh, it seems that way. <gasps> I can't watch that. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, John. Yeah. I want to thank you publicly, live, for connecting me with this guy and his dummies, baby. All right, and I love everything you do for me. I love everything you do for me, man. Yeah, thanks, John. I greatly appreciate it because I've had nothing but a fun time. <laughs> we got to get John yeah. live here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I know he was a vent. I asked Jerry, uh, did you ever have a ventriloquist on the show? I thought I'd be the first, but she had somebody else. That, uh, so say who I had. Do you remember? Oh, I forget. Some Greg Morton from it. Greg Morton from AGT, baby. <laughs> yep. Greg, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I'm having a blast. I'm acting like I'm five. I'm here with these dummies, and yep. I don't know what I'm doing. But You'll have to put an order in with uh, Conrad to get your own. So much fun, yes. <laughs> John, what would you like to say in closing, sweetheart? No, I... Uh... I, I know it's hard to do uh, ventriloquism, uh, but uh, I like Mike from Newswatch, and uh, I thought he would uh, be great on your show, and that's why I, I uh, messaged him uh, to be on, and I know you liked it too. So, <laughs> Thanks, so, John. John, we love you, and we need Jamie Lee Curtis next, please. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you, John. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> Take care. Look, the dummies yeah, are yeah, saying yeah. bye. Bye, John. Stay See you, John. Bye-bye. <laughs> Have a good show. Then. Thank you, sweetheart. We love John. Love yeah, Newswatch was a uh, internet page that I started up uh, about five years ago. We already have uh, close to 11,000 cool. subscribers, which is pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And uh, John's one of them. I thought it was uh, my other buddy, John. Uh, and I met him years ago when I was doing uh, interviews down Atlantic City on OND radio. And uh, his so, talk more into the mic. Tell everybody about your radio. Uh, well, I uh, oh, started out at my baby. <laughs> WOND 1400, and back then they were oldies. And I worked with uh, all kinds of great guys. Tom Lemaine from Channel 10. He was uh, there in the early days, and. Uh, and Pinky Kravitz, who is well known, uh, Tom McNally, uh, my brother Chris Dupree was on there for years. But I switched from the AM station to their FM station, which was 104 MGM, and uh, worked there for several years. And they also had uh, WMGM TV 40, and I, I did a little work. I did camera work and also was uh, uh, did voiceovers and commercials, uh, commercial liners for them. But I've uh, always been in radio and announcing. Of course, you can't tell it today. I've got uh, allergies real bad. Uh, last night, I got uh, into a box that had dust in it that I got from. Uh, oh. <laughs> I was going through trying to find some stuff, and uh, it's, uh, my eyes puffed up, and then I started losing my voice. I thought, oh, that's perfect. I'm going to be uh, <laughs> appearing today. But, oh, yeah, uh, before I forget, we were talking about who made the figures. Yes. This is a very special figure. This was uh, made by Bill Nelson. Okay. And Chuck Jackson carved him. Bill Nelson created him. And if you look at the end of Halloween Kills in the credits, he actually gets credit for uh, designing the uh, the puppet. That's really yeah. cool. And uh, I, I enjoyed seeing that because uh, Bill Nelson... Uh, Great guy and great uh, ventriloquist figure creator. But he, as well, is made out of uh, basswood. And this is actually the very first, this one here, dummy that Jeff Dunham used as Walter at the convention way back in the, uh, the early days. Yes, and I remember that. Okay, I remember that. Yes. He... Uh, Actually, Jeff Dunham borrowed him from uh, a guy, Rick, uh, that owned him at the time. And, and uh, Rick uh, wouldn't, I've, the way the, the story goes, 
is that uh, Rick wouldn't sell them to him. So he went and had the Walter that you see on TV carved. Okay. So cool. <clears throat> so why is he so miserable, man? <laughs> well, that was the uh, Mr. Horowitz line. And there's a, a lot of copies of these out there. Not necessarily. Uh, they all look pretty similar, but every one is different in their mm -hmm. own way. <clears throat> and in fact, uh, John Peasy has the twin to this. Uh, John's a... Uh, a professional ventriloquist that performs all over oh, the area. Cool I know a lot that? of people uh, know John. John's been around for years and he's been a friend of mine. And in fact, the twin, he bought off of me years back. <laughs> this is so cool. So we'll put him back. He's a boob guy, just so you know, this one here. Okay. <laughs> I don't know that he's neutered. <laughs> Oh, this is so cool, guys. There you go. Oh, she's got soft hands. <laughs> <laughs> so now I want to talk about the movie a little bit. So first of all, pros and cons. Let's oh. hear it. <laughs> Come on. Okay. I... Uh... I'm impartial. Yeah, I know. I know. You'll tell uh, us what you've heard. It, well, I, uh, I did have one complaint when I was at the uh, premiere that we had at uh, Regal Cinema in Manahawk, and, and uh, we had a sneak peek on the 14th, the day before they actually opened it to the public. And one of the guys uh, was complaining, it's too gory, it was too much bloodshed. It was a slasher film. Hello. <laughs> and uh, he says, yeah, I, I just didn't care for it. I says, well, I'm not the guy that wrote it. But <laughs> so there are people out there that complain about it. I thought they did a smashing job. Uh, smashing. And, <laughs> and I've always kept it pretty tight and close lipped that I had the, the script. Obviously, if I was in it, I had a script. But I've had that script with me the whole time. And once people found out when I got IMDb credit that uh, I had the script prior to the movie being released, you get these offers from these wackos that I'll buy that script from you and this, that, and the other thing. And I was like, absolutely not. I said, if I were stupid enough to do that, that's like ruining, ruining somebody's surprise birthday party. It's like telling them, you know, yeah. there's a surprise birthday party for you this week. You just don't do that. Right. Uh, even though I signed the confidentiality thing and all, I, I would never do that in a million years. You, you just don't do stuff like that. But that shows you how into it these uh, fans are. And from the time this movie has been released, it's totally changed my life. It's been a, a life changer. I've had calls from all over the country, uh, many from England as well. Very uh, cool. Yep. Uh, a guy from England, uh, he he wants to do a Zoom call now. And uh, so there's a lot of these people that do this that are contacting me left and right. My son and I were out eating dinner, and a lady walks up with her uh, placemat, and she said, you're that Mike Dupree from Halloween Kills, aren't you? How cool <laughs> is that, right? And I said, yeah. She says, would you sign my placemat? So I said, well, I actually have pictures that uh, – I, I sign. I said, I'd much rather do a picture for you. She said, oh my gosh, that would be so great. Would you mind? I said, no, not at all. And then the lady behind me said, I'd like one too. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I went out and got a stack and I'm signing them for people and handing them out. So wait, I have something to say about that. So okay. think about how cool that is that you didn't have your dummy with you. No. Just you. And they recognized you. Right. That's insane, <laughs> right? Isn't that it great? Is. Yeah, that means that they're not just paying attention right. to the dummy, but the also, other dummy too. Yeah, <laughs> the big dummy. Um, but here's another thing, and I forgot to tell you the whole time I was a lineman, Atlantic City Electric, great company, greatest company on earth, actually. They would send me out with my dummy to the local schools to do electrical safety. That's amazing. It was called the Lineman for Safety Program. And I don't know if other electric companies around the country do that, but Atlantic City Electric did. And I was sent all over the place doing these shows. And a lady that I met uh, in one of the local uh, 
box stores, said, you know, it's funny. Um, my son, she, because she knew who I was, uh, she says, my son, when he saw that movie, he said, that's the guy that was in my third grade class that had the puppet. And I thought, that's amazing that that kid would remember. That is amazing. But I used to bring him with me. Uh, so let me ask you something. Do you do nursing homes? I have done nursing homes, okay. yeah. Are they afraid of him? No. Okay. How many puppets do you have? Right now, it's 20. Okay. And it fluctuates because uh, <clears throat> I'll use them. And then when I use them and the characters washed out, I'll trade them, I'll okay. sell them, and get new. So okay. I always have a, a, a bunch of different ones. Do you have one or two that you know you will never get rid of other than this guy, yeah, of course? Yeah, I, I have probably eight that Okay, never... that you know. That's mm -hmm. good. So when you go to nursing homes, which one would they prefer? Uh, it's funny. They don't care. They Really? They're looking at the art form. Yes, the talent. Like they're in, right. That's what I do. I'm like, how do you do this? Yes. Yeah, that's what they're into. Whereas the kids, the kids will say, "You're talking for him. I know. I can see your." Because they're trying to figure it out. Yeah. We don't care about figuring right. it out. We want the entertainment. Yeah. That's brilliant. And the older people, it's great because they're such a great audience. They're thankful you're there and. Uh, they're just happy to get out of their rooms and have a little bit of entertainment. But a lot of them remember, you know, they grew up with Edgar Bergen and Charlie yeah. McCarthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so it's a thrill for them. And it's, it's great. I think it's, uh, you know, I've always volunteered my entire life. I'm uh, sure. Local you fire companies. You seem like that, yes. Uh, I been, was a member of the fire company. I used to do fire prevention with the very first mm -hmm. dummy that I had. And I still have it, but... Uh, was it in a fire outfit? Yeah. That's so cool. Oh, yeah, in fact, I have a picture of it. I'll uh, show it to you if yeah. I rem remember. And you send me that photo. Yeah. Because that's pretty cool. Uh, Do you have any in police officer outfits? No. Okay. And the reason I don't was uh, Mike McDade, who uh, worked for Creative Safety, he actually goes around to the schools. Gotcha. And they... They charge the schools for this, uh, or I think they sell some advertisement okay. in these magazines or whatever, and that's how they, they pay for it. But he has the police uniform, the gotcha. figure, and that's why I, I let him do that. Yes, yes. I, I try to do a little different. Yeah, but at least there's one does. with it. That's pretty cool. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's, in fact, in the ventriloquist community, every year they have the ventriloquist convention, and it's uh, July, I think, every year. I miss this one coming up, but I have to go next year. Uh, obviously, because of the movie, a lot of people are saying, yeah, I, I want to meet you, and this, that, and the other thing. And I said, well, I'll make it next year. I'll, I'll make a point to go. So I'm going to publicly ask you something, mm -hmm. okay? Guys, I'm actually thinking about and probably going to start writing a screenplay for my book. So do you have any donkey dummies? Donkeys? <laughs> no, that I don't have any animals. I okay. do have a couple soft puppets. Okay. Donkeys? No. Could we get some? I probably could come up with one. Because I would like you to be in my play. Is there any nudity involved? Okay, listen, donkey nudity, <laughs> I, yes. Yeah. We will, for you, we will have donkey nudity. What do I'm, you think? I'm joking. No, but right? Because I could be a chip and whale dancer. Okay, chip and whale, I love it. I promise you we will get you donkey nudity. <laughs> this could be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. So. It'd be great to work with you again. I mean, oh, this my is, gosh. I've been such a thrill, to be, be honest with you. So could you publicly say, am I really a smart ass? Oh, I know the answer to that. Are you really a smart ass? <laughs> she is. <laughs> I agree. Oh. Well, <laughs> but you're a fun smart ass. This though. is That's great. <laughs> this is so great. Um, so let's see. What time? I mean, we have plenty of time. I don't want to cut this short. I mean, no, I'm not ready I to go. I want you <laughs> to talk about, honestly, what I would like you to talk about and let everybody out there understand is your career as a ventriloquist, first of all, mm -hmm. what you're looking to happen with it. But did you have to like take lessons? No, I'm, I'm totally self-taught. How did you do that? Well, what I did was from a young age, I sat in front of the mirror and I came up with the idea. And in fact, uh, one of my good friends that I grew up with, her daughter stopped by the house 
and uh, she is a she's starting out as a ventriloquist and she has a soft puppet and she is so good at it but she was having problems pronouncing so i was teaching her how i did it and like i said i said what you want to do is sit in front of a mirror and then say that every letter of the alphabet but first keep your teeth together like a b c d e f g so i could do it yeah anybody could learn let's try okay all right just say a a b b like a the boy bottle can't do the b <laughs> okay. that's a hard that's the actual hardest word i can't do the b but i could do a d how about d, c c f f <laughs> without the lips yeah but no that's actually how you start out uh you say every letter of the alphabet just with your teeth together. That's how you start. That's like the first step. Like A, B, C, D, E, F, Did you read a book to tell you this? Uh, no. No, how, I came uh, up with that on my how own. How did you, that's where I'm going with this. Like, how did you come up with that on your own? Uh, just by me standing in front of that mirror, because that, that in the mirror part is part of the first lesson. I want to see you do B. B. No, B. B. No, B. <laughs> <laughs> Bottle of beer. <laughs> uh, Please. That's great. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, that's what you do. And once you get the alphabet down with your teeth together, that trains you to keep your teeth together, and that's the key. And uh, Italian women can't do that, so that's yeah. probably why. Yeah. Well, Italian women, I don't, well, I guess you're operating the ventriloquist figure with one hand and talking with yes, the others. That's right. <laughs> I'm joking. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's all you do. And then you substitute different uh, sounds. Like instead of saying F, you're actually saying theft. Yeah. Like theft. Like forever. Uh, Friday. So you're saying Friday instead of Friday. And yeah. Every letter that is tough like that, you just... Yeah, uh, and you make it funny. Sure. It's great. And what I do, if you notice the, the voices I do are a little higher pitched, that makes it a little more clearer. Oh. So if I was to do this, it's uh, sometimes hard to get some letters out. But when you do this, it's so easy to get words out. People can hear it. The heck are you doing, that, man? <laughs> that's pretty cool. I'm choking myself up. <laughs> Do you need a water? No thanks. Okay, that's pretty cool. But but that's actually how I started. How old were you when you were in the mirror doing this? Five. I was five years old. How? All right, my granddaughter is six. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna share a silly story because you said that the kids look at you and and they're trying to figure it out and they'll yeah. question you. Silly story has nothing to do with being a ventriloquist, but how little kids think, and it's so brilliant because, mm -hmm. believe it or not, they're so much smarter than we are. They, we, they think outside of the box. That's right. They they think we have sure. so much to you know. Right. My my granddaughter got ringworm on the bottom of her foot. She was she goes to a nature school. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's homeschooled, and so she's six now, and she was just turning five so over a year ago when this happened and my daughter's putting some we do everything natural natural stuff on the bottom of her foot and she said mommy how do you get ringworm and she said oh you have to get it from another kid you were playing in the in the water at the nature park and maybe your foot touched another kid's foot makes sense right mm -hmm. a, a, an adult would just be like oh she looks at my daughter and she says, then how did the first kid get it, mommy? <laughs> you see what I mean? So yeah. kids are so intuitive and just so much smarter than we ever were. Yeah. So when you go to schools, you go to schools with these, right? Mm -hmm. Do the kids come up to you and do they say things like, I want to touch your dummy? Always. Always, right? Because yeah. in their minds, mm -hmm. that's like making them have a connection with it, right? right. Do they want to try? Always. And yes. <clears throat> Yeah, well, they see something, they, oh, let me try it. And I would actually let the kids do yes. it. Yes. Now, of course, I can't let them with, with that. him. Right. And that's why I always usually bring another that's one right. with me uh, because he's priceless now. Okay. But uh, one thing I did find when I switched from, uh, they did, the, like I said, the Lyman for Safety program. They always had, you know, gruff Lyman come in and teach the kids. And the, the kids would, you know, retain some of that. Once I came in and incorporated the dummies, the kids were listening to every single yes. word 
and comprehending and then remembering exactly what that dummy said. And years later, I have had kids come up to me um, and say, oh, yeah, I remember you from school. And they would actually say one of the lines that I said way back when. And the That's teachers would so say great. the same thing. When they would do tests uh, on the electrical safety, the kids would ace the test because everything that I said to them, they remembered through the dummy. And it grabbed their attention. It was like watching a cartoon. So now I want to talk about something else you shared with everyone. You, you struggled growing up. Yes. Still talk, do. Still do. Talk to the camera. <laughs> uh, this is, there's a reason why I want you to talk to the camera. And okay. I want you to give hope to parents out there oh. or people struggling. Oh, absolutely. Go ahead. Autism. And there's many levels. There's uh, you know, basic mild levels all the way to severe where a child will sit there and do repetitive motion. And uh, I know it's, uh, you know, such a shame to have a child with that, but uh, there's so much that can be done, so many therapies out there. And just because a child has autism is not the end of the world. And uh, I had a moderate a form of autism and I still have it. I've been able to cope with it and I've made my way through life without most people even knowing that I have it. I do, uh, you'll, you'll notice I'll fall back and lose my train of thought real easy and, and stumble over some words. But uh, thanks to different things and exercises I do, I've, I've been able to overcome it for the most part over the years, but it's still a struggle. I can't spell to save my life. I, I rely on spell check, but unfortunately my phone is just as a bad of a speller as I am. A lot I of am. people can't spell, so go ahead. Yeah, and math, same thing, bad at math. Uh, but other things I excel at, the arts, uh, you know, I, I can draw, I can paint, I can carve, that's, that's my big thing. And um, <clears throat> I've, my big thing is restoring things. I love uh, taking something old and refurbishing it to a uh, brand new. But again, with the uh, children with autism, I know it's easy uh, for people to lose their temper with them, uh, but mm. you just don't understand what the child's going through. And it's, a, you, you know, unfortunately, uh, too many people do lose their tempers and, uh, there's really no need for that. Uh, the child has uh, problems that they're Not they're cool. coping with, and they cope with them in different ways. And and some of them act out with violence, and uh, you just have to give them a little little space. Fortunately, I didn't have to go through that phase. Uh, mine was on one of the different spectrums. Uh, with Asperger's and uh, mm -hmm. a lot of memory comes, I've, you know, I have mm -hmm. uh, memory loss a lot. Yeah, I'm losing my memory now. Don't <laughs> yeah. worry about it. As I get older, I find that it's, uh, it's getting even worse at, at times, but uh, fading memory is a, a big thing with right. the Asperger's. And, uh, but if you think your child may have it, it's best to get them tested. And uh, I know my parents, when I was going through school, they knew I was having struggles and they didn't know why. So they had me tested. And back then, like I said, they had no clue uh, what was actually going on. And they thought that I had just a regular learning disability. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> it was a little more than that. And the school misdiagnosed it, which is, mm -hmm. you know, typical for back in the, the late sixties, uh, you know, when I was going through uh, school, but now, you know, they have all the proper tests and they can diagnose it and uh, they have therapies and, uh, it, you know, there, there's so many people out there willing to help now. Uh, you know, I, I hate to see anybody have to suffer with it. it I want to share something <clears throat> with you and everyone listening. Sure. So I did an interview recently. You can research it or get in touch with me. I'll share it with you. A family started a ranch. It's called Puzzle Ranch. Okay, they have horses on it, and for families with kids with autism and disabilities to come to their ranch. This family had four boys, all with autism. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. And look at what they've done. They've turned it in some, into something incredibly beautiful and positive to help others. I'm going to share something you may or may not know. Back in the day, way back in the day, a young girl was told, I don't have all the facts perfect. 
You guys can Google what I'm saying and you'll, you'll see the story. But from what I remember reading, a young girl way back in the day was told by the school maybe to the mom that your child can't learn and you need to take yes. your child out of school, whatever it was. Um, I don't remember all the details, but here's the important part about it. So the mom took her to, I think, a friend of hers maybe that was a doctor. And the doctor put the little girl in a room alone and said, your daughter's not crazy. Put music on. Or they told the mom the daughter was crazy because the daughter would do weird things, okay? And they put the little girl, the doctor put the little girl in a room where they could see, and they put music on. She was doing weird things. And the doctor said to, to the woman, your daughter's not crazy, your daughter's singing and dancing. Do you know who she was? She was the creator of Cats. <laughs> okay, isn't that cool? So, you know, we have to all understand. I don't know why it happens or why these things occur, right? We have to understand. They, they have an idea, yep. and a lot of parents have done a lot of research. Okay. And what I found, uh, a buddy of mine, uh, he was best, I was best man in his wedding. Uh, his son uh, suffers from a severe form. They believed at that time that it had to do with the mercury that was in the... Uh, Vaccines. Yep. Okay. It is what it is. I wasn't going to say that or bring it up. You yeah. have it. You know you said it. Right. I'm a nutritional health coach. It absolutely is. Yeah. And, but here's the thing. There's one more thing I can add to this. Um, like the family that had the four boys, there is a gene, and it's usually boys. And if the family has that, certain vac vaccines with too much mercury could trigger it, and that's why there were four. Right. Um, my grandson is 20 years old. My granddaughter, like I said, is six. They've never been vaccinated. Um, I found a lawyer back then uh, for my religious rights. So I got my grandson. He's in college now. Hopefully, with everything that's going on, he'll still be able to go through without any vaccines. Mm -hmm. My granddaughter's never <clears throat> been vaccinated. Thank you, God. Very healthy. Um, but you're right, and that is 99% of the cause. So I'm glad you brought it up and I didn't have to. And what I found when I was younger, every time you got a cut, what was the first thing they put on it? Mercuricone. Mercuricone, and that's and mercury. That's exactly right. That's okay. where the... Now, they had mercuricone and methylate. Methylate. Methylate was the one. Yep. They, were bo they both had mercury in right. it. But mercuricone didn't burn like methylate did. Mm -hmm. And there you go, mercury. Yep. Is that crazy or what? That's why it was taken off the market. Okay. Everybody said, oh, that stuff was so great. I don't know why they did, they did away with it. Well, it was because the They took the it off the market, factor. but they put the mercury even more in the vaccines. Yeah. Okay. And see, that's one thing I disagree with. And any time I got my kids immunized, I asked them, does this have a stabilizer made with mercury in it? And if they said, yeah, I said, well, okay, I, I don't want that. Good. Uh, because there are vaccines that are similar that some have it and some don't. So just because one doctor has the kind that has the mercury in it, you can say, I'm not taking that, I'm not allowing my child to have that. But and isn't it amazing they still have it in it? Isn't yeah. that craziness? Yep, it's as a stabilizer because it's uh, an antiseptic of sorts. It, uh, and, uh, you know, it's crazy. There's got to be something better than that that they can use. I want to read a poem out of my book. And it's for everyone and anyone struggling with anything today. And the reason why I chose this poem is because I want to bring attention to what the average person tends to do for their own self-preserve. Um, I'll put it that way, okay? People tend to fake it till they make it. And I don't like that. We need to face it till we make it. And it, it doesn't just go for addicts. It goes for everyone struggling with anything. It could be abuse. It could be addiction. It could be health issues, right? We have to start facing everything that we're going through in order to be able to say, okay, now how do I heal? That's the first step. So I want to read this poem because I think it's appropriate after us talking about what you just spoke of. Face it till you make it. 
Fake it till you make it is a term heard so much. I don't really agree. It's like living with a crutch. Not just for addiction. All life lessons, my friend. That's a sad in life to live until the end. I'd rather go by a saying more real. Face it till you make it in spite of how you feel. We got to grow up, put our past behind. In spite of our hurts, there's greatness to find. I'd rather go through life smiling every day, holding up my chin, all good things to say. Positive thinking and actions likewise throw out a force up into the skies. What we project is what we will earn. Karma is real. We each have a turn. Your thoughts are wired to make you think with what you do can make you sink. Keep all your thoughts uplifting and real. Feeding your mind crap destroys how you feel. So don't put out crap. It comes back to bite. Stand up real tall and just fight the fight. I promise you this. If you face all your fears, it may be quite scary, but will add to your years. One day you'll be happy with who you are now, with who you now are. Just look at me. I've really come far. I look in the mirror and like what I see, but most important, I really love me. Guys, it's okay to say you love you, and you should love you, okay? And it's okay to say you're great at something. If we could say somebody else is incredible, I think you're incredible. You Thanks. should be able to say it as well. When you, do you think you're an incredible ventriloquist? <laughs> Come on, I want to hear it. Well, I'm, I'm a I modest hear it. person. I want to hear it. You were, you were in Halloween Kills. Do you think you're an incredible ventriloquist? Say it. <laughs> I'm incredible. There you go, baby. So... <clears throat> I just had to put that out there. That is touching. Okay, I, I had to put say. that out there. So what else do you want to talk about? The mic is yours. <laughs> Come on, be silly well, and stupid uh, and do see, some nonsense. Come on. Well, I could talk about some of the cast that uh, yes. I appeared with. Yes. Because I know a lot of people have questions about. Yes. Uh, there was the sexy nurse who was played back. by Carmela McNeil. Beautiful lady. Oh, my gosh. Such a nice lady. Um, and she played the, the wife of the sexy or the sexy guy doctor Ooh, honey, honey. <laughs> Michael Smallwood honey honey and uh, they both uh, are in the film and I won't tell you uh, any of the details uh, for those of you that haven't seen the film yet but uh, Michael Smallwood great guy and uh, he's from uh, Carolinas and he absolutely loved Horace and in between shots we'd have a lot of downtime uh, setting up and whatever and he would uh, say, oh, you mind if I hold him? For that? <laughs> <laughs> a, a grown man, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah he's, so cool. uh, but Michael is a true artist. And I can't say enough about him. He's a super guy. We still keep in contact. Uh, you know, he comments every now and then on, uh, you know, my Facebook. So he's uh, following along. Carmela, she doesn't go on Facebook, but she's on Instagram. And uh, Nancy Stevens, she played the original nurse in the original Halloween <laughs> And what a super lady. I, and like I said, there was no egos in this film at all. And uh, it seemed like everybody were relatives and it was uh, a get together and a gathering. We knew we all had a job to do and everybody, you know, nailed it. Whatever they needed to do, the Levescu triplets, like I said, they were uh, wonderful ladies. And uh, I keep in contact with them. Uh, <clears throat> we'll text back and forth once in a great while. And, uh, you know, I'm, I miss talking with them because they were so funny. And they would, when they would talk, they would take turns and cut each other off and pick up where the other one left. It was amazing how much in sync they were. Because they were triplets. Yeah. And it is true what they say about triplets and twins. They, they knew what the other one was thinking before they would say it. Amazing. Uh, Robert Longstreet, I spent a lot of time with him. Um, he starred in, uh, what was it the house on haunted Hill was the name of the movie, but you'd, you'd have to check that on IMDB. I, uh, and such a great guy, very intense with his, uh, acting, but such a, a nice sweetheart of a guy. And, um, I can't say enough about him. In fact, when I'm, I'm sitting there in the green room, because uh, they had us in a separate area that was air-conditioned, because it was in the middle of summer. Uh, well, not middle of summer. It was in September. But for South Carolina or North Carolina, that's still considered summer there. And it was hot. And um, 
And we were filming. They had to turn all the air conditioners off so there wouldn't be any noise. So it would heat up real quick. And uh, then they had these air conditioned units on the outside that in between shots, they'd turn them on and it would blow Arctic cold air in. And uh, it was neat. But uh, Longstreet and I, I'd, I'd sit there talking with him and I, uh, he, I'll tell you what, real brilliant guy. He is going to go very far in the uh, acting business, and uh, he's already done so many things. But he is such a, a great actor, and uh, <clears throat> most actors in between shots, they like to just sit there and they don't want to be bothered. Uh, not him. He didn't. Mind. He he would actually bring up stuff and ask me questions, and I'd ask him questions, and uh, he. Then they'd say, okay, we need you guys to come in. And he'd come in and he'd deliver his lines just like like he's been doing it uh, that line forever. Uh, that's how good he was. I didn't even see him with a script in his hand. That's how good he was. Other people would see him walking around and looking around. Kyle Richards was another one. She was uh, always on set. Um, she was always there, very friendly. And I know she's in Housewives of Beverly Hills. Yep, and she yep. comes off as a little gruff, but... On the set, she was a, a wonderful person, and uh, I was in the makeup chair next to her, and I was talking to her a lot. And uh, real, she's a really happy-go-lucky person, to be honest with you. Hold it, makeup set. How much makeup did they put on you? <laughs> Absolutely none. Everything oh, okay. when you see me in the film, that. But what they did was, uh, as they're applying one's makeup, they're doing others hair and they would do my hair. So okay, it was the right, same yeah, yeah, every yeah. single day. That's so funny because <laughs> yeah. what would have really been cool? Like when you guys were kind of done with everything you had to do, if they kind of made you look like him. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, uh, little John in the movie, which is played by Mike McDonald, Michael McDonald. Uh, he actually has the rouge and, yeah. and, and sort of looks. So I know you're not going to watch the film, but if you look, uh, if you can tell me exactly like, time-wise where to go to see like what you want me to see okay. for you and all that i will do that okay because i have nightmares guys i can't do yeah, it it's it's going to be broadcast uh, at theaters everywhere obviously and it's also on peacock tv uh, universal peacock uh peacock streaming and you can get that on any smart tv it's uh, definitely worth a a look to see the movie uh, yeah. i will warn you it will give you nightmares yeah i can't do it it uh <laughs> It is a slasher film on speed. It is probably, it, it is definitely the most intense movie I've ever seen in my entire life. And uh, I've seen a lot of films and this definitely pushes the envelope. And that's exactly what uh, David Gordon Green said he was going to do. So wait, I have a question about the triplets. Okay. All right. Because I'm scared even talking about the triplets in a scary movie. Because that's yeah. scary, man. It is. All right. Uh, and I'm going to bring up a picture for you yes. to, just to show you. Uh, okay. And uh, that way you know what we're talking about. When okay. We're, and you'll get to, to see yeah. them here. Let's see. <laughs> they were beautiful ladies. Ruben. There Do you want to? Oh, wow. The, they're like mermaids. Ruben, do, yes. do us a favor. Put this photo up close to the camera so they can see this photo. Thank you, sweetheart. Ruben is one of the owners here, baby. <laughs> He's our tech guy, sound guy, everything guy. Uh, that's, that's hard. I, I probably uh, should have emailed these to you before we did the All right. It's hard production. to see it. But yeah. All right. So the triplets. You can you can look them up. So they're like mermaids in it. Yeah. They. Well, they're scary mermaids. Not scary. Okay. Oh, good. Oh, perfect. Oh, there you go. Very cool. Yeah. Scary triplet mermaids. Not not scary. Do no. they get bloody? No. Oh, so they don't get bloody. I, I, well, I don't want to give away the movie. They uh, they survive, and I do too. But oh, okay. Well, they, I just, uh, that's good. I don't want you to, can look okay, them thank up. Thank you, Ruben. And. It, it actually helps awesome. me out if you look up uh, Mike Dupree actor and then click on the IMDB page. And uh, <clears throat> they're too cute to be in that movie. I'm sorry. <laughs> you kind of look like your puppet. <laughs> yeah. And see, that's not with makeup on either. So, right. Uh, that's pretty cool. But, and you definitely look like the colonel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was great. Uh, it's, yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's actually going to be what I'm going to dress up uh, for Halloween. Yeah. I belong to the uh, Redmond's uh, Lodge. That's great. And. Uh, <laughs> Wow. That's uh, Carmel McNeil. Yeah. And uh, I have so many great pictures from being around uh, the set. We're, we're really not supposed to take any pictures, but I had to snap a few. And uh, in fact, Barbara, I, I had to take a picture of Barbara because uh, she was, I mean, phenomenal. Wow. And it was such a shock when <laughs> out of everybody that you picked, uh, you know, you called her and uh, asked her to be part yes. of it. And uh yeah, I don't have it saved on okay. here, but I've, I've got a lot of pictures. It was a shock to hear from her because she was such a, a nice lady. And Well, I had to bring her on. She saved your life, man. <laughs> yeah. She kept you alive. Yeah, no, she did. She <laughs> kept all of us alive, to be honest with you. And uh, such an even-keeled lady, too. And nothing nothing would uh, get her going unless she's scared or something. <laughs> all right, so I have a couple questions about the movie. And we're not giving away anything because yeah. I know it's bloody. And it's out. So it's okay. not like... Uh, and it's bloody. It's <clears throat> scary. All right. So um, you mentioned only a few people survived. <laughs> well, that I, the only reason I said that is because uh, it's killing on a uh, industrial level as far as... Okay. There's a I lot of that. kills. Not everybody died. Okay. But I just said is that... Is everyone it, killed the same way? No. Okay, so they're killed with knives. Some, yeah. Okay, they're killed with buildings collapsing on them? Not really. Oh, guns? Well, Choked? Uh, one, yeah, <laughs> yeah. one is, and it, let me put it this way, there's a surprise ending to oh, no, I'm not gonna, no, no, no. You'll tell me later about the surprise because I'm not uh, watching Yeah, no, no, no. Uh -uh. Uh, okay. But yeah, there is a surprise ending. And um, it was so well written at the end. It, uh, you know, it, it got me by surprise. And I, I knew every kill pretty much because I read the script. So I knew it was coming and I was still shocked. That's uh, <laughs> when I saw it on the big screen for the first time. So tell them a little story because I have to find a photo for you. I want to show you something. Okay. So talk to them about anything you want about the movie while I do this. I just thought of this. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything that uh, that happened. Everything was just, it was like a, a fairy tale, to be honest with you. It, uh, the way everything happened and, uh, you know, they, they treated us all like we were movie stars and we weren't. Um, from the time I hit Screen Gems Studios uh, and got outfitted by uh, Emily uh, Gosher, uh, she was the uh, wardrobe person and uh, designer, and she did an outstanding job. And uh, <laughs> at one point, I'm uh, getting measured, and uh, James Jude Courtney is there, and he's getting fitted for uh, his jumpsuit for... Uh, Michael Myers, and uh, it, it was pretty cool because he actually put the mask on uh, as well for the uh, effect. And I have a picture of it somewhere on my phone, uh, but that was pretty cool. I thought that was neat. And uh, <clears throat> So what else do you want to tell everybody? We, we have a few more minutes. We have like 10, 12 more minutes. Uh <clears throat> Well, you were talking about the, the picture of me that looked like I had makeup on and I, I matched to uh, Horace, but I was actually down in North Carolina the week before that I actually had to appear for filming. And I wasn't even sure at that time that I would be able to be there for filming because there was a uh, hurricane that came up the coast prior to and wiped out uh, a lot of the power lines in South Carolina and North Carolina and also Georgia and Florida. So we were sent from our power company to help the restoration efforts in those states. So that's why I was so red at that time. I was actually in the sunshine, you know, where we were putting lines up and, and uh, everything. And, um, <clears throat> but we finished and everybody got put back in service. So it was like, three days before I was supposed to report to North Carolina, I was actually 40 minutes from the car where uh, Wilmington was. And uh, I said uh, to the lady, em Emily, if you want me to stop by, I can uh, 
stop by the studio now and get measured because I'm uh, 40 minutes away. Uh, and she said, no, I'm up in New York City. So I said, oh, okay. I said, I'll be back down anyhow. So the next week I, we got home just in time and then I got flown back down and it was funny how. <clears throat> well, I didn't find the photo and I realized why. So I'm, I'm an artist and my grandson who's 20, a couple years ago said, I need um, the Joker. And I need it in black and white, and I need the face, and I need it really scary. And I didn't want to do it. And I said, but he's my grandson. He's my boss. He's the only guy I'll listen to, okay? <laughs> I'm like, all right. So I do it. Because he was doing something with it online with his nonsense. And I did it. And it came out incredible. And he was like, that's crazy me, Mom. <laughs> But I had it in my art folder, but I got scared every time I saw it and I deleted it. <laughs> oh, I just remember that. I was uh, like, I didn't even want it on my phone. <laughs> well, the funny thing about the Joker, and uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, it's called The Man Who Laughs. No, it's a scary movie? It is. You know. And that's what the Joker was actually based on. And it was a guy who had a permanent smile, and it was... Uh, a silent film so look that up the man who laughs oh. and you'll actually see that was the inspiration but for... was the guy did the guy really have a permanent or was no it no. was an oh, actor was like... but uh he was such a he was german gotcha. and he was such a scary looking okay. guy to begin with and uh when he actually had it was wire that was on these uh set of dentures okay and it would actually yeah. oh put him in a uh, permanent smile yeah, no thank was, you it was really scary but uh <laughs> yeah. so listen so we we've got about 10 more minutes so tell everyone how to reach out to you tell everyone about the movie again when it, like where they can see it what's going on with it and i want to hear from you what your next plan is oh I really do. Well, my plan has been the same it's never stopped. Okay. I uh i belong to uh it's called Backstage, and okay. there's constant jobs coming up. And then you just uh, apply for the ones that you want. Oh. I've been in several music videos. I've uh, been in quite a few commercials. And uh, I was also supposed to be in, uh, like, the next 48 hours where they do crime reenactments. At the first of the year, I was all set up, and I was getting measured for uh, my clothing that I, uh, <clears throat> I was going to play a police officer, a detective. And... Then uh, the the week before we were going to film, uh, they said, oh, yeah, you got to go get a COVID test. So I went and got COVID test. It came back positive. I called and told the lady that uh, I just came back positive. And she says, well, follow up with your regular doctor. They get so many fake right. uh, false negatives right, right. or whatever. I did, and it came back positive. I was like, oh, geez, wow. great. Uh, <clears throat> but fortunately for me, my son had it, uh, we had mild cases mm -hmm. and, uh, so we didn't have, uh, you know, the, the problems good. other people did, but, good. uh, I, I missed out on that part and I, it always killed me thinking that, you know, it was right in Philadelphia is where they film it. And it was so close, uh, to where I live and it would have been such a great part, but I missed out on it, unfortunately. But, uh. Uh, as far as the other aspects, uh, if anybody wants to get a hold of me, of course, Facebook, Instagram, I'm on, on uh, not Instagram, I'm sorry, Twitter, um, I'm on there, uh, Mike Dupree, obviously, and same thing, Facebook, uh, Mike Dupree. Right now, it's getting harder. I've had, uh, since the movie hit, I'm I've sure. had over 900 friend requests. Yes. I, I got to delete a lot of them off because a lot of them are from Brazil and right. things of that nature. I'd much rather keep it to people yes. in the United States and, sure. uh, you know, that kind I of I made thing. the cut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I've got 40, uh, 4,300 friends now and they only allow you to have uh, up to 5,000. Right. And some have passed away. Like, I'm going to share it with you something I did because I, I was sick for a few months there. And I just like in the middle of the night, I couldn't sleep. I went through and just checked everything out. I deleted over 200 contacts that were no longer oh. contacts. Right. So, yeah. And what's bad is because uh, sometimes somebody will pass away and you're so shocked. And then 
a year or two will pass and you've forgotten about it. And all of a sudden they come up in your birthdays and you're like, oh, geez. Or you're crazy enough. You're just saying, oh, happy birthday, happy birthday. I did it two and weeks ago. Did you really? Okay. It's somebody had passed away. Because I didn't know the person passed away recently. And, and it was a person from town. I, I never really knew the person well. A good friend on Facebook who saw it messaged me and said, Jerry, sweetie, you didn't know, but just two weeks ago, so-and-so passed away. I said, thank you, and I went and removed it. Yeah. And then I removed him. But right. yeah. No, that's a good idea. I'm going to have to try that right. because I've, I know yeah, I I've got that. at least 15 people on there that passed away yeah. that keep coming up and I always put happy I heavenly you, birthday. I you're probably but... going to delete at least 1,000. Trust me. I'm, I'm sure. Yes. But uh, yeah, I always welcome uh, friends, especially yeah. ones that I have uh, mutual friends yeah. of, uh, ones that have no connection. A lot of times I don't, but if you send me right. a message and say, hey, look, I, you know, I'm a big fan. And, but also another thing that... Uh, has just blown my mind is the uh, request for autographs. Uh, I've already had probably 350 requests and a, a lot of times That's the, younger, cool. the younger kids, I have to take care of the little kids. Uh, I always sign them off. If it's somebody that approaches me on the street and I have a picture, I'm definitely signing it for you. That's uh, so cool. And you know, the internet ones are a little tougher because I actually have to, it cost me a dollar fifty to send an eight by 10. Did you bring a picture for me? Uh, I do have one out in the truck that I can certainly give good. you. And actually, I have a lot more than I Okay, good, yes, good. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I do need his autograph, with me. right guys? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, a new world for me because, you know, I'm just a basic guy from, Tuckered in for the most part. And, uh, Everyone started out as a basic person. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm still the same guy, though. That's that's so the cool. thing. I'm very approachable. You, you know, you message me, I'll get back to you. Uh, you see me on the street, you say hi. I'm going to stop and talk to you. Yep. And, uh, that's, that, anyway. and that's what it's. That's why I got into the entertainment field is, so cool. is you know, to make people happy. And uh, like I said, there's no egos involved. And... Uh, you know, I hate that when somebody thinks, oh, I'm so beyond those people and the little people out there. But, uh, Please you know, I stop it. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't like that. And I'm really turned off uh, because there was a comedian that I ran into. Uh, I was backstage and uh, a real he was huge at the time, had a show on TV and uh, he was the nastiest guy. I think I know you're talking about. We'll talk I've, later. Uh -huh. ever met in my life arrogant and nasty uh and i uh, i just didn't care for him from the get-go uh but everybody else that i've worked with throughout the years uh and rubbed elbows with uh george wallace i worked with uh, oh, he's cool. such a great guy oh my goodness so he's cool. so funny on and off um, John Joseph, uh, who was friends with my buddy, John Barilero, uh, John and John, uh, they used to be a team. Uh, John's a great guy. Uh, oh, I have a cool question for you. Right. All right. Who do you want to meet? Like, I know everybody has that person, you know, I really want to meet so-and-so. Who is it for you? <laughs> that, you know, that question was put to me a while ago and it is so hard to really come up with an answer for that okay. uh, because I'm such a nostalgic film guy and every, uh, I want to say Hank Garrett okay. from car 54. Where okay. are you? And he's been in quite a few other things. I would love to meet him. He's the last surviving member from car 54. Where are you? Well, there you go. Uh, but yeah, I'd love to meet him. He, he, I think he lives up in New York or maybe Connecticut. He, he would definitely be somebody that would be a thrill. Um, and he wasn't like some huge movie star. Uh, he was on a, a TV show, and uh, but one of my yeah. favorites, Car 54. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, and one of my crazy hobbies that I've had forever, I collect antique microphones like the ones that you would see on david letterman's desk or larry king that's cool uh the old capsule style yes. i have many of them 
that I've gotten and refurbished myself. I even have a 1950s actual RCA TK11 television camera that they used on every single 50s television show. It's about six feet tall and about five foot wide, and it's in my studio. Do you know how many people we know would want that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not in their studio okay. or in the living room, okay. but well, I've got to be, and I everybody that sees is like, no, you've got to be I the mean, only person. No, I mean, in uh, what we do, oh, yeah, so in many this of us field, would want sure. that. Yes. Especially when they see how I've refurbished yes. it. And remind me to show you the picture of that. Okay. Um, it was in one of the news stories that okay. uh, one of the papers, uh, Rick Mullerup, uh, cool. who is a buddy of mine that did a story on me. And uh, he actually took a picture of me standing in front of it. And uh, it's, it's probably one of my premier pieces that I have in my collection. I have a lot of RCA mics, uh, a lot of NBC mics that were actually used on the air. That's and that's cool. part of my collection. And uh, that's so I have cool. a unique alarm system too. So if anything's even jostled, I know. And then- That's uh, so cool. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's a crazy, collection that I have that people say, who the heck collects microphones? Yes. Well, I'm that guy. That's great. <laughs> and uh, I also have a YouTube channel too. I forgot to tell you, my oh, gosh, come on. Uh, it's uh, in the garden with Mike Dupree and what it is, it's actually somewhat of a serious tip related gardening show. I haven't recorded anything for the last month or two, but I have about 30 videos on there now. And then I have a quirky neighbor that shows up um, and you have to watch the That's video. Cool. He makes various appearances. He's not in every one, but uh, when I start filming again, and uh, I, I plan on doing that as soon as the movie okay. thing starts calming down, I'll start to film again. In the, in the garden? Yeah, in the garden with Mike Dupree. Very cool. And it's on YouTube. And uh, you'll you'll get a kick out of my neighbor. And uh, Horace actually makes a uh, a few appearances. I bet Horace does. <laughs> you'll see him on my tractor right. and uh, <laughs> and a few other things. You get a little insight into my life or whatever. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I filmed that. I started filming back in May, and I was uh, filming it once a week. So every week I was making another video. But that's something that was near and dear to me: gardening. I always uh, did vegetable gardening. My father taught me that yeah. from a young yeah, age, but <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Very cool. So guys, we're coming to the close of the show. Um, first of all, I'm going to let you say some closing words. I want to thank you personally, all kidding aside. Oh, you're we've had a blast, but all kidding aside, you honored me today. You truly honored huh. me. I'm honored. <laughs> Listen, and Hamilton Radio, you... Okay, so you got to meet Doc G, who started <laughs> Hamilton Doc. Radio. He's, okay, he's one of got, my favorites. Okay, I'll tell you, you Ruben. To, he didn't stop laughing. <laughs> no, Listen, I know. you got to meet Ruben, his partner, <laughs> and you didn't get to meet Monk. Monk's really cool too. Is he? Um, so, but. Listen, they're just like on cloud nine that you came in here for us today. Anytime you want me to come, I know how yes. to get here now. <laughs> yes, we're going to do this again. I would, I would love but to. Your, but your boys. <laughs> I don't even want to call them dummies because they're the, well, he's a dummy. No, that one's a dummy. That, hey, one's, I, a, that one's a boy. <laughs> All right, your boys. Um, awesome. You made my day. Okay, we haven't stopped giggling before. You had a sis. We were all like blast. nut jobs, okay? <laughs> it was amazing. So I really, truly want to thank you. I want to I thank will. everyone out there who's listening and watching. Please share this show and please go to the Jerry Petito Show YouTube channel, guys. And please click subscribe, okay? And go to his as well, the, the Green Garden. <laughs> Close in the garden. In the with, garden with Mike Dupree. I don't know so. why I'm thinking. All right. <laughs> so now close. I'm gonna let you do the closing words, Ruben. We're gonna let Mike do closing words, and then you'll take us out with the song. Well, first of all, I, I really want to thank Jerry. Uh, you have, are such an inspiration. This book. And I'm gonna if autograph you, this for you. How about that? I would be honored. <laughs> this is. It, it looks outstanding, and uh, people with autism, of course, have issues reading, but. Fortunately, this is big print and poetry. I did and, it on purpose. Yeah, and I thumbed through it and definitely go out and get a copy. I and I all treasure that, of course. Uh, and 
with the autograph with the group. That's right, baby. How about that? <laughs> but first of all, I'd like to thank everybody that uh, went out and <gasps> saw the movie and everybody that uh, reached out to me for support all along saying, oh, we love the movie and everything. It was because of the the fans out there that made this movie possible because without people actually mm -hmm. going out and seeing Halloween 2018, there wouldn't have been a, a Halloween kills. And of course, coming up in January, Halloween ends. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that they invite me back to that, but we'll have to they will. wait and see. But uh, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. And uh, of course, for Jerry's show and Hamilton radio. This has been such a, a great time. I hate to leave. To be honest with you. This is such a thrill. I just stayed 24 so hours. Cool, right? I'd have done a telethon here to be honest with you. That's how great it was. But again, thank you for everybody out there for watching. And I, I hope you had as good a time as we did in here. I know it was a, a great time. And uh, if you see me out there, make sure you come up and say hi. I'm one of those guys that I'd love to to meet you and uh, I shake everybody's hands and does anybody ever come up to you and say hey dummy <laughs> I think that would be, I would do it now if I saw you out in public baby I, I yeah I, I've never had anybody do that but okay, okay well, here you go. hey dummy I did it I'm yeah, the first. You go. All right. I'm gonna start a new trend but uh, yeah handshake fist pump whatever you you want uh, I'm known for big hugs Me and too. Uh, yeah uh, you're Italian so uh, right. you know got a hug and uh, but yeah, it's it's been a thrill, and uh, this is so great. Again, I can't thank everybody enough, and uh, we're doing it again. Oh, Mike Dupree. Absolutely, I'll stop by. Halloween kills. And that film. When you do that film, oh, I want to be part you're of. You're in it. <laughs> and the boys. We're and gonna have some course. boys in this too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in, say, tell the boys to say goodbye. Say goodbye. Well, let's. Well, yeah. Yes. I'll I'll bring Horace up here because he'd be uh, remiss if he didn't say anything. Right. All right, I'll see you knuckleheads later. Oh <laughs> I called a knucklehead. I know what you said. Oh, your breath stinks. What does it smell like? Garlic. <sighs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Take care, everybody. <laughs> oh, and the cute one and the sweet one. He can't hang out with Horace anymore. No. I, we I, love this. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. This has been in incredible. Thank you, Mike Dupree. You're welcome. Halloween Kills and the boys. All right, Ruby baby, take us out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Petito. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. And in time, this too shall pass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Jerry Petito taught the class. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Loves the answer, the greener grass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. One day at a time, free at last. When you don't know just what to do. Just what to do. What to do. If what you're feeling is really true. It's really true. Is it really true? Just keep your ideas safe and sound. Safe and sound. Safe and sound. That's exactly how change is found. Change is found. Change is found. I'm not an addict. I'm just an ass. And in time, this too shall pass. I'm not an addict. I'm just an ass. Jerry Petito taught the class. I'm not an addict. I'm just an ass. Loves the answer, the greener grass. I'm not an addict. I'm just an ass. One day at a time, free at last.